Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Praise God. Praise God. Um, Brother David is traveling from a long distance, so his internet is kind of cutting in and cutting out. So I'm just going to take over for him until he gets closer. Uh, so I'm going to start um, off our service today. We have a powerful man of God. He's going to break down the word of God for us today. To get deep into the word. And I know he's anxious and he's so excited to bring the word of God. Because he's a man of God. Praise his holy name. And so before we go into anything, we want to open this forum with prayer. Prayer break every chain of the enemy. It tears down mountain. It moves every obstacles. It destroy everything that would destroy the word of God to come forth in the atmosphere. So we're going to pray. I'm going to pray right now and ask God to intervene in everything that we do in the name of Jesus. Father, we come before your presence today. Lord, as we're about to break your word, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, that each and every one of us, Lord God Almighty, may be fed today from your servant, oh God. We pray today that, Lord God, you take full control of everything, Lord God, that will be taking place in this forum, Lord. We know that the enemy is busy around, lurks in, Lord Jesus, oh God, to destroy and to contaminate the line, Lord Jesus, doing all kinds of things, oh God. But we pray in the name that is above every other name, that Lord God, that you may, that you may able to intervene in the atmosphere of this, Lord Jesus, oh God, line. Take control of every telephone line, Lord Jesus. We pray, Father God, that you destroy every plan, every plot, every scheme of the enemy. Tear down every strong, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, every altar, every every shrine, everything that is set up, Lord God, to disturb this line today, Lord. We come against it with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the blood that never loses its power. Father God, we pray for God today that everything will be done into your honor and to your glory, Lord, and everything will be in order, Lord Jesus, according to you, oh God, because you are a God of order. We crucify self right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we place your servant, Lord Jesus, oh God, Lord, in your hands today, Lord. We pray you anoint your servant, Lord God, Bishop Reverend Ohm, from the crown of his head and to the sole of his feet, Lord. We pray today, Lord Jesus, that you use him, Lord Jesus, as an oracle, oh God, to speak your word today, Lord. Move everything that will be an entrance, Lord God. Everything, Lord Jesus, oh God. God, what will be a black. Move it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We come against it, Lord. Your word clear, Lord Jesus, oh God, in Matthew 7, 7, that you said, we should ask in your name and it shall be done. You say, ask and it shall be given. And so, God, we ask, oh God, as we place your servant before you today, that you may use him, Lord Jesus, oh God, to speak as thus said, Lord. God, the word that is bringing, Lord Jesus, it's your word, Lord. It's your logo. And Lord Jesus, oh God, we are going to be fed from it. And so we ask that you intervene in everything, every word, Lord, let it be done to you. Crucify self. Increase him, this decrease him and you increase, oh God, and have your way today in Jesus' name. Let every heart be receptive today as we hope in our hearts to receive your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God, praise God. We're going to ask Pastor Gabriel, Reverend Gabriel, if you could pray for the servant of God as he is going to bring the word of God today. And so in Jesus' name, Father, will commit your servant unto you, using my Allah as an honorable 
that you speak your word, O Lord, that we speak from your throne. Father, give us understanding of your word and give us grace to be doers of your word also, both in and out in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because I remind you, God, that when you come back, oh Lord, Father, we shall rapture with you. That your word we're going to hear to the Lord will not stand against us on judgment day. In the name of Jesus Christ. Make us, O Lord, an embodiment of your kingdom. Put in and out in God's name. That through us, Lord, as we hear your word today and be blessed of your word, your kingdom, O Lord, will be populated. Amen. And the kingdom of the enemy will be depopulated in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because of the mighty God. Thank you, Lord, for being among the elite that you have appointed in this 21st century to propagate the gospel. Father, as your gospel come for this moment, let it come with healing, let it come with deliverance, let it come with salvation. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. So we have our Reverend Holmes who's going to break down the word of God. Promise concerning humility for us today. And so, Reverend Dome, you can um, unmute your phone and then you can come in and give the word as God give us that set. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we yeah. can. I'd like to thank God for his grace and mercy. Amen. You're welcome for an opportunity to, once again to share richness of his word and to his people. I want to thank the organizers of this event that felt not robbery to ask me to be a part of this precious platform. And we don't take it lightly. We thank God again for being here. Yeah. As always, I stand in fear and humility to preach and to speak the word in front of such great people of God. So we thank God again for you endeavoring to allow me to share. Let us pray. Have mercy, God, upon us this afternoon. We call upon the Holy Ghost, rain of the fall fresh upon me, that it might transfer unto us who are dare to hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Be merciful, God, unto us today is my cry. In Christ's name we pray. We say amen. 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 The promise concerning humility. I'm trying to relax myself a little bit. I'm nervous this afternoon. I don't know why, but I know. Um, last week, when Jenny spoke at the end of her message, I think Reverend Esteban made some uh, comments. He said, humility is a, is a deep problem, but not many people are humble. He also said that humility was a problem that happened in the garden that caused man to fall. He said, loss of humility is a loss of purity. We have to be filled with the Holy Ghost and know our position as believers in, in Christ Jesus. And then reflecting upon what he, what he said, I was kind of drawn to a couple of things this afternoon. I want to look at just for a minute, John chapter one, verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So I could entitle this message this afternoon. I want to call it humility wrapped up in, in flesh. Humility wrapped up in flesh. Paul to the church at Philippi wrote these poignant words. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, 
who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, made himself no reputation and took upon him the form of his servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And then John says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So we have humility wrapped up in, in flesh. It was Christ uh, uh, who was speaking to Mr. Nicodemus and discussing the, the aspects of his coming to earth, of his being. He told Nicodemus, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must some man lift lifted up, who said, believe in him, shall not perish to have everlasting life. So I want to use that as my backdrop and deal with the wilderness experience of the Israelites when they had rebelled against God and God sent the fiery servants, and therefore pull out of that the theme, the promise concerning humility. Nicodemus knew all too well uh, the history of the Israelites in the wilderness. And Christ brings to his remembrance this story in regard to the wilderness experience with the snakes, serpents, to show humility is what's required of us as believers in Christ Jesus and for sanctification to be manifested. In Numbers 21, verses 5 through, through 9, and the people think against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray thee unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looketh upon it, he shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. The promise concerning humility. This story excites my, my very soul. When I consider the fact that Moses had to humble himself, against those people who had, who had complained, griped against him. Now they need him to bend his knees before God on their behalf to ask God to have mercy on them. Many times it's kind of hard sometimes for us as believers to bend our knees before God for people who despise us, mistreat us, say all oh, manner of evil against us, and they call upon us for a time Time of, time of distress to go before God on their behalf. Moses has to humble himself to go before God on behalf of these stiff-necked, rebellious individuals and ask God to have mercy on them. It was Moses himself who had to reflect in the mirror of his own life, recognize that it was God's grace and mercy that had kept him, that had brought him and delivered him from where he was to where he is, was at that particular point in time. We as people must always be mindful of the fact that it is grace, mercy that has brought us safe thus far, and grace and mercy is going to lead us, lead us on home. Our grace and mercy is given to us as a result of our humbleness, willing to accept the tenets in the heart and the mind of God to keep us during the season. The old folks I grew up with had a saying about sanctified imagination. And they would take a scripture, and though at the time had passed, they said, let me use my sanctified imagination and go back in time and to unravel 
the mysteries in a particular scripture. Well, allow me this afternoon the time to go back in time and to unravel some of the, of the issues that occurred in the wilderness. And we can get a better understanding of what it is about the promise concerning humility. Some folks back in Moses' day began the time honored discussion as to why bad things happen. I can just imagine people who are sensitive and who were, who, who were elders in the camp. Everybody was not in favor of what Moses had said. The, 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 the declaration was made. Everybody was not in agreement with, with Moses. I can imagine there were people there, uh, elder self-esteem, if you will, who couldn't bear telling the people that these poisonous vipers were the result of, their, of God's judgment against their own bad behavior. Elder self-esteem didn't want the people to self-worth uh, to inflict damage upon them. So he instead had people direct people to uh, the snake pole. He had set up, into, he set up um, support groups. You don't have to go to the pole to get your healing. Make, we can make a support group. And we do that. We have different groups set up to avoid going to Christ. We'll set up support groups. We can get on and sit down and talk about our feelings feel better about ourselves. But the people who were bitten in these support groups ended up dying. Another elder uh, in the group believes that the real problem was the people's lack of faith. If you have faith, you won't, you won't die. Though you're bitten, if you got faith, you won't die. You got to speak faith into our situation, and that will keep us alive. And the people who had faith still ended up dying without looking at the serpent. Another elder named Elder Luke with him. He spoke up and said, don't go look at the snake. It's faith that saves us. But take a look at, at your faith. Look at how you're living. For don't go to the serpent, but if you just do right and you won't and act right, you won't die from the snake bite. What did it matter anyway, he said. The snake is only an image, but it has no power to deliver you from the sin of the serpent, serpent's bite. And therefore, people who look within themselves, examine their own selves, find out their own methodology of righteousness, ended up, ended up dying. Some folks in the camp, were angry that Moses, a man, wouldn't allow a woman to help pull up the snake on the pole. One woman was heard to say, I'm not going to look at that snake on the pole. If only men can do it. Only men are allowed to do it. I'm not going. And many women, even today in the church today, who feel excluded and won't come to Christ, won't bend by their knees to God, or died in the wilderness. After they die, we hold some vigils for them, but their lives is afflicted because they refused and found other means, other mindsets, other than what God had established for salvation. Someone else came up with a point. Uh, Moses is a man just like I am a man. And who to say that God told him this? And as preachers today, we're, 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 we are bombarded by folks who question our word, question our voice, our authority, our representation as people of God. And the people there who rebelled against Moses asked the question, did God really tell Moses this? We're not going to abide on what Moses said. We're going to do it our way. Another group of people that were there people who are higher criticism. They felt that this was only Moses' opinion about how to resolve the problem and not any word that he heard from God. And any healing that took, that took place, they figured <coughs> it be explained and resolved by natural causes. But when you know it, 
that crit elder criticism fooled many people. Many people are being fooled today by being told you don't have to believe in Christ Jesus. Be spiritual, and that's just enough. And that they lay, they lead worship groups that sound good and look good, but they're still dying from the snake bite that has afflicted their souls. Many people are doing chants, having rituals, doing all types of activities, but they're still they're still dying. Another group of people that were there uh, defended divine inspiration. Uh, they were fundamentals who wanted worship to be simple and easy, and didn't want to seem like they were in competition with anyone else. Let's do it the old time way. The old time way, we just have to fast and pray. Everything's going to be all right. But the people kept dying, even though they did it in the old fashioned way. One elder in the group uh, began to understand the situation indeed was very, very drastic. But he thought that instead of big, turning kind of people uh, to the cross, I mean, to the, to the serpent, he could uh, create a, have a business model where we can just do this without going to look at the serpent. Together, put our minds together. We can figure out another way to do this other than what God has established. Some people figure that if we just spend time together and we can use our mental ability, we can find a way around this serpent that God has set up, that Moses said God has set up. So the people there begin to do whatever it was that they wanted. <laughs> Some of them said, we can just do aerobics. We can get our strength built up. We can outrun the snakes. Don't you know that you're going to run from a snake into a snake? We try to make up means to avoid dealing with God. Only find out that God, everywhere we go, we're going to find God there. One elder believed that we had to make a decision for ourselves. Everybody's entitled to make their own decision. So the elder make a decision that decided that we have to make a decision. Is we're going to trust what Moses said, or we're going to have to go our, our own way. And some folk decided, I'm going to do this thing the way I've been doing it. Live my life the way I've been living it and take my chances on salvation. But some folks did look at the snake. Some people did go and look at the snake. They still died. It was the aspect of just looking at the snake. It was a condition of your heart and of your attitude that caused healing to begin. After some people decided to look at the snake, they sang songs about the snake. They sang songs around the snake. They didn't focus their heart that salvation was a result of the snake. And because they came to service, they sang the songs, had the prayers, but no heart was not turned towards God, they still died in their sin. They had an elder, elder moderate, the new leader in the camp. He felt that his reasoning had advanced beyond everyone else's. He simply smiled at all the incessant doctrinal purification. People, please, he begged. The differences we have about the snake on the pole, not a big deal. They're mere matters of practical application. It all depends on how you look at this, at this serpent. He said, can we all just get along? There's no need to be fighting and arguing in the camp. All this confusion that abounds. Can we all just get along? You see, getting along wasn't bringing forth healing. Getting along 
what differences of opinions together to decipher and to decide which opinion would be the best opinion, which thought would be the best thought. But God had already established the methodology towards deliverance from this serpent. We today, as God's people, we want to say, can we all just get along? Can the Catholics, the Episcopalians, the Pentecostals, the Protestants, whatever they might be, can we all just get along? Can we just kind of compromise God's doctrine? We, we want to have peace. We don't want to hurt nobody else's feelings. We just, let, let's just all just get along. And the issue was we all get along, but we're not looking towards Christ, looking at the pole, acknowledging our sin. We're all going to get along, have fun together, and all die and go to hell, hell together. The road to destruction is wide. The road to lead to eternal life is a narrow road, and few are going to be that travel it. But God is a God of, of uncompromising. He does not compromise to the Jew, or to the Greek, to the Episcopalian, to the Protestant, he doesn't compromise. He has a methodology for us to be saved and about humbling ourselves, taking the road of humility, and letting the mind of Christ be our mind. Let this mind be in you, God says. That was in Christ Jesus. That humility would be the, the, the avenue, the methodology, the way for us to receive redemption. Those there in the wilderness refused to humble themselves. And those who did died. So when the poisonous snakes attacked, God has set up the only way for children of Israel to survive. We had to reject every other methodology, every other ideology has to be rejected. Looking at the serpent with humility, and looking at the serpent with a humble and contrite spirit, God was not despised. It was that spirit would cause them to live and not die. If they were bitten and did this, they would live. If not, they would die. It didn't matter what else you did or else how you felt, how spiritual you might have been. The only way for redemption was to look at the serpent, humble yourself on the mighty hand of God, and God would exalt you in due season. God didn't compromise. God didn't change his methodology. And here we are, 2022, find ourselves struggling even still against God, wanting to have things our own way. And if you can have, and if we, we run people that can, that have, we saw them, people have been bitten by these snakes and are trying everything they can do to, to live other than acknowledge their sin, press their sin before God and receive salvation. Thanks be to God that we have a way out of, out of our malady. That is God's word. God's word is the, is the remedy for the sins that so easily besets us. I mean, I'm looking at this story and I'm looking at the people who did go with a humble heart, with a contrite spirit, and who have received the blessing that God promised them for being there. I'm imagining they were like the people of Israel. To the Israel who heard the voice of God and who obeyed God, God blessed them in abundance. Let this mind be in us. Let the humbleness of God be in our spirit. We might be the embodiment of humility, humility wrapped up in flesh. It's humility that causes us to be like Jesus. And declare the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, anointing me to preach the gospel, to teach and to save and to deliver. That's the, the, the promise of humility. Humble ourselves under God's mighty hand. 
Holy Ghost power be given unto us to do miraculous works in Jesus' name. It is our obligation as people of God who have who can profess to be born again. We profess that we are humble under the mighty under, under the mighty hand of God. We profess that the Holy Spirit lives in us, which is the result of our being humble before God. And the Bible says, let your light so shine before men and see your good works glorify your Father, which is in heaven. A life of humility is a life that cares for the hungry, cares for the dying, cares for those who are behind prison walls. It, 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 it has power over the trouble of this world. But we don't fret, we don't, we don't, we don't crumble, we don't fall apart, but we stand up as soldiers in the midst of a confused and perverse generation and declaring that to the utmost, Jesus saves. To the utmost, there's power in Jesus. And to the utmost, salvation through Christ Jesus is the only, is the only way. The promise concerning humility is one that God gives unto us who dares to humble themselves on the mighty hand of God and to confess and promote and confess God as Savior, confess our sins before God, and say, Lord, have mercy on, on me. Oh, the world is hungry for the living bread. The lips savor up for them to see. Then men will gladly follow him who once taught. If I, humility in flesh, be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I pray today as God's people, as God's ambassador, as God's children, that the word of Christ dwell in you richly, that the humility will be in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, in our mouths, and all that we would do will reflect the love of God through Christ Jesus. It is Christ who asked, God asked the question at the judgment. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. Naked, you didn't clothe me. Sick, you didn't visit me. Behind prison walls, you weren't there. When did we see you naked, hungry, sick, or behind prison walls? And as much did unto the least of these, you did it also unto me. Humility, it what causes us to help the, to help the sick, the hungry, the infirm, behind prison walls. It is humility that caused Christ to give up his life to come to earth. It is humility that God requires of us to save this perverse and, gen perverse and confused generation. Let your light so shine. And remember, see your good works and glorify God in heaven. And the world is hungry for the living bread to save it up for them to see. The men will gladly follow him who was taught. I looked up on the earth. I will draw all men unto me. May God bless you this afternoon for his word in Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. What a word today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God break this thing down so powerful. Even when he talks about Moses, how do people murmur? Oh my God, we have so much murmuring in church. In the house of God nowadays. They, everything they murmur for. But even through that, Moses had to humble himself. Praise be his holy name. And so we see in so many different ways, uh, when you speak about humility, what it is like to have humility. I take so much from this Reverend Ohm. It is so powerful. Your humility is love, it's caring, compassion. Praise be his holy name. And we seek Jesus Christ, how he was, oh, he shows, show up and show off humility in every walk so he walks this earth. Praise be his holy name. We're going to give God thanks. We're going to ask um, uh, Elder Pierre if he could just give a word of prayer for the servant of God who just break the word down. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, give a word, 
prior. prior. Yes. So so prayer for the servant. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Reverend, yes. Reverend, yes. Reverend, Reverend Edna. Reverend Edna. Yes. God bless you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Angelus Jenny. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Precious Heavenly Parent, our true parents, you who are our God, we give thanks to you. We give thanks for the word of uh, Pastor Holmes, who truly is a man who has embraced your word. Oh, precious God, we are grateful for the words of this man, for he has reached a point in his life, it seems, from the hearing of the message that he has brought us, that he is not a man who studies the word, but a man who the word has embraced. And so he is able to bring us fresh bread, fresh fruit, fresh interpretation of the word. For indeed, as he went back, in the past, he touched on the ways we think even on this day. We try everything, every possible means of, of avoidance of what you have established. And most sincerely, he has brought us to the point of understanding that no matter what we do, no matter how we try to avoid, the only way is the way that you, O oh Lord, have established the way of returning to you and coming to the way that you have set up for us. So we are grateful for this man. We are grateful for this precious, precious bread that he has given us this afternoon as we lift up in gratitude what we have received from him. We give thanks in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen, oh, amen. Oh, so we're gonna open the floor for takeaway. I barely can see who and who is in this forum. I know we have our man, the man of God from Africa. Come on, just ask him to give his takeaway. And I can't, uh, because I'm not. Um, Brother David has the for the yeah. So I I just see. I can see who and who, but if you're a servant of God and you're on this forum and you know that you act from this plate, give your takeaway in the name of Jesus. Pastor Christopher. Plus, yeah. Give your takeaway, man of God. Pastor Christopher is the chairman of Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria in Northern Nigeria. Hallelujah. He's on mute, but I think he can't Amen. hear. Um, Reverend Gabriel, can you see anyone else on your yourself. side? Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, we thank God for the man of God. He actually has spoken the mind of God to us. And everything God expects from us. Okay. Humility. And we pray that God Almighty will help us to practice humility in totality Amen. and live. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Reverend Alban. Reverend Alban. Yes, Pastor Gabriel. Reverend Bronx. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, you know, all the clergy. Uh, Pastor Holmes, thanks so much for your uh, delivery. Uh, your message was, uh, we're faithful. I, I, you're very faithful to your, um, the faith you have in God and Jesus. Jesus, where, to, you know, Moses is, he's a troubled man. And uh, the leadership uh, we have is a trouble. And we have to know that, first of all, that we have God on our side, and we have to understand very much that people are, are, are fearful people right now. People are getting confused, and we have to really develop that unity and uh, faith so that people, you know, hum humbleness is, is uh, God can, can put us in a situation 
that we have to be humble and that believing especially how God worked in Moses that was a very difficult situation for these people we have to understand these people very weary very weary and we have to ourselves really be like uh, sister Jenny said I think we have to step forward and uh, whereas the, the need is as the Moses figure as a, a central person whom God is going to use we have to we have to really be steadfast with our people and um, and ourselves first not be complaining but ourselves really understand that uh, what we're doing is preparing people for, to receive the Messiah and we have to do is that people are going to need to do is really empty humbleness means to empty yourself you have to really step out of yourself you have to really let go of that old self and have a new self and thank you Reverend Holmes because I, I, I believe like Reverend uh, Edner said you have emptied yourself and thank you very much for your message today because I really felt that staying with that theme staying with the story with the serpents and and people being fear, fear filled with fear their faith love their humbleness and I think that Moses was a figure that God wanted to use and I feel God wants to use each and every one of us today. Thank Amen. you very much, Reverend Amen. Holmes. Amen. Um, Reverend Gabriel, can you see anyone else? Uh, Buzz, um, Sister Minister Shem, what's her name? Uh, let me see. Minister Morris is online. Yeah, um, Mr. Sheena, Mr. Sheena. Mr. Sheena. Sheena, Minister Sheena. Yeah, Minister Sheena, are you there? Unmute yourself. Minister Sheena. Mm. Alicia, Alicia, are you online? Mm. This is not. Mm. Want to really appreciate our Reverend Holmes. He is uh, an anointed man of God. He has done justice to this uh, topic on promises of uh, humility. We discuss. <laughs> Hello, Levan. Moses was the, was the most meekest man in his own generation. You know, meekest man. In his own generation, meekness means ability to stand, ability to stand and weather the storms. And I want to thank God that that Moses stood for. And I will thank God again that he used himself as a, an example of humility. You will discover that in this generation, people are looking at you and me as leaders to really exhibit humility. And then they can take off from there also. So I pray God will help us in this journey to remain steadfast in Him. That will remain steadfast in the Lord until He comes. Praise God. Pastor Shevin, Pastor Shevin from Nigeria. Pastor Shevin, are you there? Can you unmute yourself? Dr. Shimio? Pastor Shagun. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, sir. You are welcome. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says Jesus didn't put his trust in men because he knows who men are. He obviously knows that man will disappoint him. So Christ didn't put his trust in man. What am I trying to put across of this the, the, now? Christ doesn't have certain people in, them, in, in, in himself. Humility brings you to the heart of Christ. If you humble yourself, you'll be qualified to be in the heart of the Almighty God. 
So God has no demand of man. That is why they were not qualified for them that Christ may have him. For humility qualifies one that Christ we have that person. We have that preacher. We have that member. Christ, that's, that's humility advance a member to a disciple. I pray that the Almighty God will give us grace to be humble and to humble ourselves in the name of Jesus. That Amen. all our efforts will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Amen. That's uh, Pastor Shabu. And uh, yes, the goodness of God from Nigeria. God bless you. Minister Shin, uh, Shima. Shina. Shima, Shima, Shima. Shima. Mm. Minister Ketrin, Minister Ketrin is here. Please unmute yourself, Minister Ketrin. Minister Ketrin. Okay, please. Okay. You How about Dr. Shimio, is he available? Dr. Shimio? Hallelujah. It's like most people Shimio. So Hello, everyone. All right. Dr. Shimio, God bless you. I'm glad that I was able to participate uh, this evening. And I have no word except my appreciation of. Uh, Except my appreciation of um, great spiritual sermon given by Dr. Holmes, uh, Reverend Holmes. Um, I felt uh, the Holy Spirit was working actively. I felt my sin was washed away mm -hmm. by this wonderful, wonderful sermon. Thank you so much. God is, yeah, I'm glad that uh, uh, Reverend Holmes mentioned about the second chapter of the Philippians and that, that says God emptied himself to become flesh. In the same way, I think we all have to empty ourselves anyway thank god for the work of the holy spirit i felt so much purified this evening thank you very much reverend holmes amen amen you, dr shiman god bless you thank you reverend god bless you mm. uh, Bruce. over to evangelist uh, Jenny. Yeah, um, I have a brother David back. <laughs> I can see you smiling there. I'm gonna turn over to you now for you to finish up and wrap up for us. Thank you, Jenny. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Reverend Holmes, and uh, uh, such a wonderful uh, sermon. And your speech was really uh, penetrating our heart and. Uh, make ourselves really repent, you know, repent for how much we are arrogant or have so much pride in ourselves. And uh, it's very difficult to be humble. But uh, you are, you know, uh, example in the Bible that how Jesus, Jesus expressed that uh, he himself uh, was rejected by the people who couldn't recognize him even him the it is so amazing that uh, the uh, those people who who are with jesus at that time that they 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 also t uh, face that this problem of the their pride and uh, also the uh, their you know knowledge in the and those scribes and uh, Pharisees, they couldn't really recognize Jesus. So Jesus himself showed us that 
what we have to be careful in our life in order for us to go through the way of salvation through Jesus Christ. So we are grateful that at this point that we are all, you know, face the, this issues, issue of the pride and the issue of the arrogance. And, and we have to be so repentful and uh, looking at ourselves and uh, to be, be humble. Thank you, Reverend Holmes. And uh, that's, that's so great. And uh, we have we, we have quite a few other ministers. Yeah, let me stand on the phone up there. I haven't seen the little pop with the board now. Yeah, we have Reverend Fletcher on the line as well. Reverend Fletcher? Okay, oh, Reverend Fletcher, uh, please uh, open your mic. Thank you, Reverend Fletcher. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. 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 My brothers and sisters, I'm truly uh, humbled, I'm thankful, and truly blessed that I get a chance to sit under Reverend Holmes weekly, daily, sometimes, and truly, when, when you have someone that will speak God's word with the boldness and the understanding and the clarity that he does, you ought to believe and do what the word says. And so as I'm growing, like all of us, we want to thank you, Reverend Holmes, for emptying yourself that we too might empty ourselves to be renewed, restored, as someone has said, purified, because the word works and it is true and it's the only way. So my brothers and sisters, humble yourself before the Lord God Almighty, and he will take you through all the way, not just part of the way. He will Hallelujah. strengthen you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Reverend Holmes, once more. We give God the glory, and we are honored to sit under you as your associate minister. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much, Reverend Fletcher. Uh, we have uh, also uh, uh, quite a few ministers here. Um, if you if you want to, you know, uh, call to express your appreciation, your takeaway, please unmute yourself. Uh, we have also the uh, Reverend Bruce, uh, Reverend Bruce Gradner uh is also there but uh i don't know if you if you if you can uh speak as yes. well oh yeah. Levan, Levan. hi david i'm sorry i came on quite late so i'm gonna have to get a, a recap on on this message okay. which i think each one of you really uh deeply were were, were moved by so i'm i'm oh, moved to watch the replay okay but it's nice nice to see you it's been a while uh, yes yeah. thank you uh, Welcome, Reverend Bruce. We are still talking about uh, promises of uh, humility. Mm. It's part of what we discussed last um, this is really Wednesday. I mean, last Sunday, our mm. evangelist Jenny, he was a man of God concerning that. And today, by the grace of God, we are hearing from uh, uh, Reverend, Reverend Holmes telling us the mind of God also concerning humility. Mm -hmm. um, so you are welcome, sir. God bless you. Reverend Bruce. Reverend Bruce is of the LCLC. He's one of our officers in the LCLC. He's also, also, also of the WCLC. He's wearing so many caps. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Amen. 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 Yeah, how about the uh, minister? Uh, Cynthia Cox. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> I would run a little delay, but I did guess a, a dose of his uh, uh, sermon there. Thank you, Reverend Holmes. Uh, it is humility, you know, it's it's really deep, and uh, you got to humble yourself. And, uh, you know, it is really, really, I've just so much going on golly smitten in your purpose for your weakness and then you just you just be a leader and, and he's a 
excellent leader. He, I appreciate him and all that he does because he definitely is um, ministers from the heart. He really shows us as we, you know, we're on a call Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and we get so much information. And, and I was able to leave one night. I was, I was afraid, but God gave me the strength to go on. So I just thank, <laughs> I thank God for him and uh, his his leadership and what he does. And you know, it's so important because you know every pastor don't do what he does. He's he's works and he come home and he's still, you know, out there showing us the way to you know humble ourselves and walking in right. And God upholds and proud of us. He give us grace and 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 humble us well so you know i thank god for him and uh, i really appreciate all that he does and, and i i can't say anymore just god is good we you know like reverend uh fletcher said we give it all to god we we can't say anything but thank you jesus for him and what he's doing because like i said every pastor don't do what he does so i i really appreciate all that he does and so humility really i bless you back to you guys Thank God for Reverend Holmes. Reverend Holmes has so many disciples, and most of the disciples that are here to show support, to show solidarity. God bless you all. God bless you all. We want to see the support to let you know that we want to be seeing you on Sunday, every Sunday like this, in this hour of restoration. And as you join us regularly, God will bless you richly, and God in infinite mercy will grant us all grace. To make heaven at last in Jesus' name. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend uh, Gabriel, for the word. And uh, so let's close this uh, wonderful uh, hour of restoration today. And also uh, next week, uh, we have a, a Reverend uh, Daryl Clark. Uh, the, he is the associate uh, pastor of the uh, New York uh, Belvedere Family Church. And uh, so uh, please uh, support him and uh, so also the pray that God can work through him and he can be the word. He himself. <laughs> That's the kind of word that we receive today. We need to empty ourselves so that God can speak and through us. Uh, so let's close it, uh, the uh, final prayer. Uh, glad to, uh, uh, ask uh, Reverend. To on, uh, hmm? uh, can we ask uh, Reverend Fritcher? Uh, could you uh, close with a prayer? Father God, how grateful we are that you have gathered us together in Jesus' name to hear your word, God, that we might be strengthened and that we would humble ourselves before the most high God, that God, you would take us deeper and further and you would give us, God, all that we need to be successful in this world, although we walk in your kingdom daily, God, in your word daily. Oh God, we pray unto you daily. And we just thank you, God, that when two, where there are two or three joined together in your name, oh God, we know you are in the midst of us. We give you praise, honor, and glory that only belongs to you. God, help us to believe and then receive your word. Humble ourselves that we might hear your word, God. And God, you will have your way in our life god you will work all things together for our good because oh god we love you we bless you god we thank you that you'll take us into this week oh god in humbling ourselves before you and all that we say or do and god we will continue to give you the praise on and glory as we endeavor to know more of you and who you are and to be obedient to your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. 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 And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us 
God bless us. So wish you the best of the new week. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless. Much love. God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can we meet again? Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Reverend Holmes. Thank you, Reverend Holmes. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless you, brother. Sister Jenny. God bless. God bless. Thank you.